Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, we're pleased to have another hold another press conference uh, today because of the events unfolding after the committee session of last Monday when our colleague, who I hope will still be able to join us this morning, uh, asked Pfizer a question and the answer <clears throat> was really what uh, made the news. Um, put in a nutshell, the cat is out of the bag. It was a gigantic lie, what they told us, that uh, these vac vaccines would uh, prevent you catching this virus or would prevent transmission. Well, none of that was true, as it turns out. And based on that lie, uh, all of the mandates, all of the lockdowns, all of the non-pharmaceutical measures as wearing masks, staying at home, curfews, all of that was based on that gigantic lie. And yet, they will not acknowledge it. No, they just go ahead with whatever they want to do with us. I would like to point out a couple of things um, from the EU Commission's action plan uh, EU response to COVID-19 preparing for autumn winter 2023. As you might have guessed, the focus, of course, is still on these hazardous mRNA injections. Well, that's not surprising here. Um, they would like to implement and coordinate effective communication initiatives and strategies to promote uptake of additional injections and complete the primary series of those who have not even begun yet, the unvaccinated. So once again, a particular group of a population is being targeted and um, yeah, well, that's what they're trying to do. Um, they would like to increase vaccine confidence by debunking myths and disinformation. Well, who is spreading the myths and the disinformation? It is EU Commission, it is the pharmaceutical companies, it is governments, especially in the Western democracies. They are the ones spreading the myths and the disinformation. They are the ones telling people lies. For what? So that pharmaceutical companies make profits and profits and profits. And the risks? Well, guess what? You, the taxpayers, you will be left with the, the risks. Um, and then, of course, they want to target, and that's, they specifically say that, target hard-to-reach population groups. Well, I guess in that instance, they are actually talking about me. Yes, I am a hard-to-target, a hard-to-reach uh, population group because I saw through their lies from the get-go. I'm still unvaccinated, and I will remain unvaccinated. I will not inject a poisonous substance into my body, point blank. So go ahead and try to target me. Good luck with that. Then, of course, they go on with uh, the gaslighting, labeling vaccine hesitancy, this is what they call it, as anti-Western and anti-EU. Can you believe this? So anyone who is not willing to let themselves be injected with this vaccine is anti-Western and anti-EU. No, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear about this. If you do not want to poison your body, and it is your choice to do with your body whatever you please. Remember, my body, my choice? That's their narrative, actually. Remember that. So, if you do not want to take that vaccine, that has nothing to do with being anti-Western or anti-EU. It is pro-people. That's what it is. And it is anti-globalist elites. That's what it is. And in this action plan, they refer several times to not only COVID-19, but now they slip in influenza. So this will be the next step uh, for their measures, whether it be uh, vaccinations or non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, like uh, wearing masks or staying at home curfews, then they will be able to do so when there is an influenza pandemic or wave. And whenever I think they could not possibly come up with yet another atrocity 
to inflict on people, they sure as heck prove me wrong. The EU Commission proposes now the prioritized administration of the update injection for the vulnerable groups, and then they list who these vulnerable groups are. And they start by saying people aged 60 years and older, individuals with underlying conditions. No problem there. But then they list another group. And you really need to brace yourselves for that one. The vulnerable group among those who should be given priority to take this update vaccine are pregnant women. I have never heard anything more despicable than that. Because the point is this, they do not know what this vaccine does to the unborn child. They simply have no clue. And yet, now they're pushing it on pregnant people. And keep in mind, there has been a drop in birth rate. We don't know why that happened. You would expect the opposite of that. I mean, people were locked down. Remember what happened when they had a blackout in New York in the 70s? Nine months later, they were like babies left and right. But not this time. People were locked up for months in their homes. Nothing. Drop in birth rate? Interesting question. And these are the questions that we should be asking. So just to give you an update on that, they will continue to try. They will continue to push whatever uh, their end goal is. They are trying to. And um, yeah. I would just like to thank you for supporting us and for letting us know that we indeed are advocating and fighting for what you, the people, want. These globalists and their puppets are but a few people with no regard for you, for the people. We, on the other hand, are many because we are the people. And we will continue to fight for you, for your rights, for freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, for your introduction speeches, did Pfizer falsely advertise their product or products or no? Well, we now know that the answer is yes. They did falsely advertise their product. And it wouldn't be the first scandal Pfizer was found I will remind you, as I stated on COVID committee, 10 years ago, Pfizer was fined in Croatia $60 million for bribing Croatian doctors. Also, they paid more than $2 billion for false advertising before. And there are also many other cases. So, let's go back to the point. How do we know that the vaccines do, uh, do not prevent transmission. We know since uh, October or November 2021, when there was, a, uh, there was a big paper published in The Lancet, which stated that there is no statistically relevant difference between the vaccinated and unvaccinated in spreading the disease. We are not really scientists, but now we know. We know since October or November 2021. The question is how long or when did they start, when did they start to know that? And as far as we know, they knew it from the beginning. On Monday 10th, 2022, at COI Committee in European Parliament, representative of Pfizer answering to a question of our colleague Ross admitted that their vaccine was never tested for transmission. It was not even an endpoint of the trials. In the following days, even the so-called fact-checkers confirmed this, cynically stating that this is nothing new. When it comes to the Commission, it is similar. Representative of the Commission, Mr. Wolfgang Philipp, from DG Hera, said on October 13th, 2022, at the following COVID committee, I quote, if you want to have a vaccine that prevents transmission, we could have got it. But it's not there yet. There is work going on in this direction, 
but it is a completely different design of these vaccines, end of quote. This piece of information stated by Mr. Wolfgang Philipp simply confirms that from the very beginning, from the second part of 2020, so two years ago, they knew that the products that are being developed will have nothing to do with transmission prevention. Nonetheless, it didn't prevent them from implementing Digital Green Certificate. When it comes to EPPO, European Public Prosecutor's Office, a few days ago, following our, following our actions in COVID committee, European Public Prosecutor's Office decided to conduct an investigation regarding vaccine procurement. This is a step in the right direction. However, the issues with all of this go far beyond the procurement. So what we know now is that Pfizer lied. It can be seen from many statements of Mr. Borla that Pfizer vaccines were presented and promoted, presented and promoted as a product that prevents transmission. For example, back on September 8, 2020, Mr. Borla sent a message to those who were skeptical about their product, those uh, who have no intention of being vaccinated. So I quote, at the end of the day, it is their judgment, but will affect the lives of others because if they don't vaccinate, they would become the weak link and that would allow this virus to replicate, end of quote. Also, he later stated that, I quote, a lot of indications right now that are telling us that there is a protection against transmission of the disease, end of quote. And there are many other, exa other examples that before the introduction of vaccine, during the in introduction of vaccines, and shortly after, Mr. Burla and the others were presenting their product falsely, that this product has some features which, la which were later proven to be untrue. And they knew it from the beginning that it doesn't have such features. Now we have confirmation from them and also from the Commission. So, the governments use these lies, these fake news, to implement digital green certificate and to take our rights away. This is a disaster and they need to be held accountable. Thank you. Pfizer lied, people died. Governments lied, people died. Ursula von der Leyen lied, people died. This is what we learned in the past week, starting of October 10th, 2022. On that day, we found out on record that a representative of Pfizer acknowledged in the COVID committee in the European Parliament that they never tested their injections for stopping the transmission of the virus. The same information was confirmed three days after, on October 13th, 2022. A representative of the European Commission in the same COVID committee stated the following, and I quote, and the, his answer was after I asked him about the effectiveness of these injections. And he said the following, if you want to have a vaccine that prevents transmission, best of luck. We could have got it, but it is not there yet. There is work going on in this direction, but that is a completely different design of these vaccines, end quote. So this is the second confirmation from a governmental official that they haven't tested these injections for stopping the transmission of the virus. So everything that they've said in the past two years proved to be a huge lie. And because they lied, people died. Because in these two years, when maybe there could have been developed other kind of treatments of this virus, nobody pay attention to that. When scientists, when medical experts said that there are regular treatments to this virus, they were labeled as promoting disinformation and not trusting the science. Well, this is what the science just stated right now, that they haven't tested these medical products for stopping the transmission of the virus. The third thing that happened last week, 
on October 13th who discussed in this COVID committee a report released by the European Court of Auditors. This is a public document. And I invite all the journalists and all the people to find it online and read it. Because they will be shocked. But they will find in it. And one of the things that I found and pretty much shocked me is the following, and I quote, by November 2021, the Commission had signed 71 billion euros worth of contracts on behalf of member states to purchase up to 4.6 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses. We are 460 million people in the EU. Ursula von der Leyen signed purchasing contracts of 4.6 billion COVID-19 doses of vaccines. When I saw this figure, I thought that I'm not seeing clearly. I wear glasses, you know, I have to do this. I mean, are they serious? That means 10 doses of vaccines. She signed contracts to purchase for every human being in the European Union. So the question is, if these vaccines or injections were so effective, in other words, were providing immunity from getting infected and from transmitting the virus, why would she purchase or sign to purchase 10 doses of vaccines or injections? We cannot call that vaccines now, after what we just found out. She signed to purchase 10 doses of injections for every EU citizen. This is simply absurd. And the fourth thing that we found out is the ongoing investigation by the European Prosecutor's Office, which on October 14th released the following statement, and I quote, the EPPO confirms that it has an ongoing investigation into the acquisition of COVID-19 vaccines in the European Union. So, unfortunately, it took us two years to realize and to make these public officials and these companies to acknowledge something that all of us said by raising just logical questions. Logical questions. And unfortunately, and I have to say this, the worldwide media refuse to ask these logical questions. What are the studies, or what were the studies back then, behind these vaccines? How long did they take to develop the vaccines? Are they stopping the transmission of the virus or not? We find that now, two years later, that they are not. This is a serious issue. And I hope that all these public officials who are still holding public offices will never ever be again elected by the people in any such office. And nevertheless, considering the fact that Ursula von der Leyen lied and people died, clearly she committed fraud, corruption, She's in a clear conflict of interest. She must immediately and unconditionally resign from the position as president of the European Commission. Thank you.